Good day, everyone. In our first lesson, we defined what a differential equation is. We went ahead to form some differential equations. We saw how differential equations are formed. So in this lesson, we are going to see how do we solve differential equations, okay? Uh, to solve a differential equation, we have to find the function from which the equation is true. This means that we have to manipulate the equation so as to eliminate all the differential coefficients and they have a relationship between x and y. Let's put it down. So that is it when we are required to solve a differential equation. What they need us to do, what they require from us is to eliminate the differential coefficients so that we have a relationship between x and y, okay? In doing so, we have different methods of solving differential equations depending on how a differential equation has been given to you. So we are going to discuss solution of first order differential equations. Other high order differential equations will be dealt with later. So today let's try to see some of the methods that we use to solve first order differential equations. The choice of solving a, a given differential equation depends on how the differential equation has been arranged. Basically, we have about the four main methods of solving a, a differential equation. Uh, among them, we have direct integration, which is just a straightforward method. So uh, one, we are going to have direct, we are going to solve differential equation is by direct integration, okay? That's going, to, that's going to be our first method of solving differential equation is by direct integration. How do we go about this? Let's see in the following example. Oh, we want to look at the solution by direct integration. Integration. Now, how do you know that a given differential equation will be solved by direct integration? Okay, let's see. So, if the differential equation can be arranged as so if the given differential equation can be of the form dy dx is equal to a function of x then this equation can be solved by that integration okay so in this equation you will have the y dx or the differential coefficient on one side, and then the other side is a purely function of x, okay? So what are some of the equations that we can really solve? And why do they call this method really a direct method? Let's see, okay? Suppose we are given the y by dx is equal to three x squared minus six x plus five. Look at that equation. On the left hand side, we have the y dx, which is the differential coefficient. And on the right hand side, we have a purely function of x. So this becomes really a straightforward equation to solve because what we do is just simple, okay? dy is the same thing as 3x squared minus 6x plus 5, okay? By dx, it's just a cross multiplication. So, apply integrals, the mm -hmm. y is integral of three x squared minus six x plus five by dx, okay? So when we integrate without limits of integration, this becomes an indefinite integral. And whenever you integrate indefinitely, you must always include a constant of integration. So there's the one here, okay? Even if you don't put most of time. So if I integrate one with respect to y, I will end up with y, okay? Is equal to, and this is going to be three x cubed over three minus six x squared out of two plus five x, then plus a constant of integration. I should have added the constant, on, the constant of integration on the left hand side but if you combine those two constants, the one on left-hand side and right-hand side, you get a single constant C. So it is a good idea to always add a constant of integration 
on the right hand side. So the rest is just simple. It is a chicken and egg problem. Uh, you just simplify your equation. You have y equals to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus c. So that c, we include it to cater for the constants that disappeared in the process of differentiation. Remember, when you differentiate, when you differentiate a constant, it goes to zero. And the, you remember the first lesson about differential equation is where we are forming differential equations by differentiation. So any equation which had a constant of integration, it will always disappear to zero when we form a differential equation. Now, when we solve to go back to y and x, is that we have an equation which is purely in terms of y and x without the differential coefficients, then that C must always be included, okay? So this is our solution. We have found it. Now, let's look at an example, another example, example two. Example two, we want to solve x dy by dx equals to five x cubed plus a four. So this is another equation that you can solve by direct integration. But you know, they have tried to trick you a bit by putting x on the left hand side, okay? And then the other side is having five x cubed plus a four. Now, what you do first when you're solving this equation? Begin by dividing through by x. So you have dy by dx equals to five x squared plus four plus four over x sorry about that but just a small a small mistake let's let's see this this plus four over x okay next is the integrating both sides you can integrate dy by dx with respect to x is equal to the integral of 5x squared plus 4 out of x by dx. Okay, this is the same step. One would, would have just decided to cross multiply. But uh, you now in mathematics, we have so many ways. You just keep playing around, okay, to tease people's minds. Just doing the same thing, but uh, you no, know, you have to be someone who is a practical job. I like joking with people when they're learning and teasing their minds. That is it basically. So integral of dy will be equal to the integral of five x squared plus four over x by dx. And when we integrate, we end up with y equals to five x cubed over three plus for natural logarithm of x plus a constant, okay? Please be careful. You now we say that when we're integrating powers of x, x to power n by dx, we say this is x n plus one over n plus one, provided the n is not equal to minus one. When n is equal to negative one, always be careful, okay? Don't say it's gonna be x to power negative one plus a one over negative one plus a one. Be careful with this. This is a mistake so many students make, okay? When it is minus one or four over x, it will always give us a natural logarithm. And now this becomes the solution of the given differential equation. That's our solution. Y is five x to three out of three plus four natural logarithm of x plus a constant of integration. And we have solved this simple equation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are accumulating more reason to smile, okay? Let's look at example three. Example three. 
solving differential equations by direct integration, it says find the particular solution of the equation. Okay, the equation is e to the x dy by dx equals to 4. Okay, and they are saying that uh, given that y is 3 when x is equal to 0. Okay, yeah, so sometimes saying y is equal to 3 when x is equal to 0, they will say y of 0 equals to 3. You may find this, you know, somewhere. It is a short way of writing y is equal to 3 when x is equal to 0. All right. Let's find a solution. It's going to be solved by direct integration. We have been given y, okay, Oh, this is what they've given us, they've given us, let me first erase this. Okay, they've given us e, e to the x, dy by dx is equal to four. We say that the equation that can be solved by direct integration, we shall always have dy dx on the left hand side, and then the rest on the other side, which the right hand side, will be purely a function of x. But the examiner, you know, does not just want to give you directly the information, the way you know it or the way you have written it down. So what they do, they trick you so you can, you know, play with your mind, you start thinking. So this is dy by dx is 4 over e to power x. And it's the same thing as 4 e to the minus x. Remember in the indices you talked about something like uh, 1 over a to the n is the same thing as a to the minus n so 4 over e to power x the same thing as e to the minus x so the next step is to cross multiply this is 4 e to the minus x by dx and the apply integrals Okay, so we are having integral of y, the same thing as integral for d to minus x by dx. Okay, you know, I have told you that there is always a silent one they put here, but you know, when you integrate, we end up with y is a 4 e to the minus x. Here yeah, we already differentiate the power and divide by that the derivative, which is a negative one, then plus a constant. Or you can say y is minus 4 e to the minus x plus a constant. Okay, so they are saying we find a particular solution. This is a general solution. Whenever we have c, that constant of integration we include, it's called a general solution. Now, if you go ahead and find the value of C, what you get is what you call a particular solution. Okay, they have given us that uh, Y is equal to three. Okay, when X is equal to zero. So let's substitute. We have three is a minus four E two. Okay, plus the constant. And therefore, you know, e to power 0 is equal to 1, 3 is equal to minus 4 plus c, since e to the 0 is equal to 1, okay? And therefore, 7 is equal to the constant of integration. All right, we are getting there. So let's go back and substitute value of c, and we have y y equals to minus 4 e to the minus x, then plus a 7. 
So if you want, you can go ahead and arrange this to have. You can arrange this and you end up with y equals to seven minus four e to the negative x. Or you can even have y is equal to seven minus four out of e to dx, okay? The rest are just mathematical maneuvers. At one point when I was a student at Google University during my undergraduate studies, I met an interesting guy called Chachiga Jime. Chachiga Jime taught me one thing when we used to meet and discuss physics and mathematics. He says that the major step here was just to get the constant of integration. The the way we write the final answer, you know, depends on how we want it to look like. So it is a mathematical maneuver. This is an interesting guy, he's a teacher. In Ikakiresi, yes, I think so many of you would want to meet him. He's really very interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have so many reasons to smile. We have got a particular solution, okay? Yeah, we have so many reasons to praise the Lord, you know, to sing the Mukama. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you realize that the first method of solving differential equations, first order differential equations by direct integration is really a straightforward method. There is no difficulty encountered. Let's look at another method of solving differential equations. So method two, we are going to solve by separating the variables. Okay. So this is our second method of solving differential equation is it is going to be by separation of the variable. So we get to discuss the second method of solving differential equation is and this is going to be by separating the variables. Okay. So this is another method and the we are to see why we have to solve by separating the variable. Now, they are given differential equations, okay, of the form dy dx is a function of both x and y, okay? The, the x and y's are mixed up on the right-hand side, unlike the previous method, where we had dy dx was purely a function of x on the right-hand side. This equation is dy dx is the a function of both x and y, okay? So if we are faced with such a situation, then we got to devise some other way of solving the differential equation. And this is going to be the method of separating variables. We are going to see how it comes now to help us solve or find a solution of the given differential equation. So we begin by, oh no, this is bad. So when do we use the method of separation of variables? Okay, let's consider consider equation is of the form. y by x is a function of x times a function of y and of the form okay dy by dx is a function of x of a function of y yeah we want to look at equation is where we have products of function of x and functions of y or we have the quotient of a function of x to a function of y okay these are the basic forms that we are going to solve by the method of separation of variables here the order does not really matter so much 
in the quotient it is either f of y over f of x as long as you are able to separate the variables there is no problem so don't fix your mind that it's going to be f of x divided by f of y or is no that's not the case okay let's get to see how this is redone how we go about this remember we are talking about the equations of the form the y by dx is a product of a function of x and a function of y okay or the y by dx is a quotient i.e. equation is in which the right hand side the right hand side can be expressed as products or quotients of functions of x or y. That is the emphasis. The method of separating variables can only apply if the right hand side is a product of functions of x and y, or it is a quotient of functions of x, functions of y. So that's when we get to understand that you know what the method we are going to employ is separation of variables. It is either a product or it is a quotient. Let's see an example. So we take this example. You have you are given sort of y by dx is equal to 2x over y. This is what we are going to solve. Now look at the right hand side. We have 2x divided by y. That is a quotient, the function of x and the function of the y of y. Okay function of x divided by function of y. So when we see such kind of a situation, then we sense, okay, that what we are going to use the method of separation of variables. Why do we say this is the best method to solve this kind of differential equation or this form of differential equation? It is because I can arrange terms in terms of y on one side and the terms in terms of x on the other side, okay? So let's look at the solution. No mathematicians not really have so many words. Okay, we have y times dy, the same thing as 2x times dx. And the, this step, we have separated the variables. Okay, the x terms on one side and the y terms on the other side. So the next step is to go ahead and integrate. So we have y times dy is equal to 2x times dx. And therefore, when we apply integrals, y dy equals the integral of 2x by dx. So you get y squared over 2 is equal to 2x squared over 2 plus a constant of integration. Or you can have y squared over 2 is x squared plus c. If you want, you can have y squared is equal to 2x squared plus another constant, maybe a. Okay, and this is now the general solution. So let us look at some more examples here. Let's see. I try to economize my blackboard. Okay, suppose we are given, we have been given this 
equation solve y by dx is equal to 1 plus y over 2 plus x. Look at it critically and try to compare with the equations that can be solved with the method of separation of variables. You can start the right hand side is a quotient, but this time it is a function of y divided by a function of x. Okay, so the task we have is to separate variables so that we have terms in y on one side and terms in x on the other side. It is really very simple. Okay, so you go ahead to manipulate this equation so that you have 1 over 1 plus y dy is equal to 1 over 2 plus x by dx. Okay. Uh, when you integrate, you have 1 over 1 plus y by dy is equal to the integral of 1 over 2 plus x by dx. So these are integrals that always produce natural logarithms. Okay. Let's see. When we integrate 1 over 1 plus y, we end up with natural logarithm. You get natural logarithm of 1 plus y is equal to natural logarithm of 2 plus x plus a constant of integration. So we can go ahead and write c, the constant of integration. We can also go ahead and write it in terms of a natural logarithm. So writing c as the natural logarithm of a we get okay natural logarithm one plus y is equal to natural logarithm of two plus x okay? then plus natural logarithm of a okay so why are we struggling to write c in terms of natural logarithm what is the essence of this you know, using the laws of logarithms, when you are adding two logarithms, you can go ahead and multiply the powers. So natural logarithm of one plus y is the natural logarithm of a into two plus x. Okay. And the, you know, when you have the same base on both sides, we can always go ahead and equate the powers. Okay, let's see this. So this is our step so far. Natural logarithm of one plus y is equal to natural logarithm of, okay, let me write a into two plus x. Okay, so since the bases are the same, we can go ahead and equate the powers. This is what I'm trying to say. This logo base e one plus y the same thing as logo base e of a into two plus x. So bases are the same. We can go ahead and say one plus y is equal to a into two plus x, and therefore just writing it. In a more clear way, but I'm not changing anything. And this is the solution of the differential equation. So it is simple. Remember, the method we are discussing is solving differential equation is by the method of separation of variables. Okay, let's look at another example. This is, I think, example four. If I'm not mistaken, or example three, whatever. It was as long as you get to understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's look at this other example, example four. We have been given dy dx is equal to the function you see on the right hand side. Okay. Remember, we are discussing the method of separation of variables. And we said for us to be able to separate variables, we either have a quotient or it is a product. And when you look at this, it is just a mixture of the two, but you know, the question has been set in such a way that you can be able to factor out some terms. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, in our solution, we have 
the y by dx equals to y squared d plus xy squared d all over x squared y minus x squared. Looking at this, this will be the same thing as y squared, it is a common factor in the numerator, so 1 plus x all over x squared d into y minus 1. Okay, so let's go ahead, manipulate this so that we have variables or terms in y on one side and terms in x on the other side. So, okay, what do we do? We end up with the y minus 1 over y squared d by dy is equal to 1 plus x over x squared by dx. If you look at it really critically and you are separating variables, you are going to have y over y minus 1 by dy equals 2. So next we can try to simplify this, you know, to ease our integration. You may separate the numerators and have this as a 1 over y minus 1 over y squared d. This is by dy with the same thing as a 1 over x squared d plus 1 over x. This is by dx. Okay. Uh, now, what do we do next? Let's integrate. So let's go ahead and integrate both sides. Uh, but before integrate, we can make this even more easier for us by writing 1 over y minus y to the negative 2 dy equals to x to the negative 2 plus 1 over x by dx. Okay. And integrating both sides, we have natural logarithm of y minus y negative 1 over negative 1 is equal to x to negative 1 over negative 1 plus natural logarithm of x plus a constant of integration. So we can finally write natural logarithm of y plus 1 over y is equal to minus 1 over x plus natural logarithm of x and plus a constant of integration. And the, this is for sure our solution to the given differential equation. Okay, so there are really so many problems about a method of separating variables, but we cannot really exhaust it all of them at this time. So as a student, when you get a hint, or when you get to know how a particular problem is solved, you look for as many problems as possible and solve, okay? Feel free to post a comment. I will always respond to your comments and I will help you out. All right, have a nice day. Okay, go ahead and try this question is to test your understanding. I'll put the answers on the right hand side. So it's up to you, I think. You cannot always try this, they are just simple questions. All right, have a nice day once again.